Delegates, please take your seats. I gave you a little, nice little stretch. Please take your seats. Thank you. I see you moving to your seats. Thank you. So, delegates, as you know, we have had a very long and deep partnership with our friends and NEA member at the White House. Yes. And in just a few minutes, we're going to be joined by them. Live video stream. So we'll be able to interact with our president and our first lady. Yes. Let's just take a moment to pause and consider all, probably not all, all that the Biden and Harris administration has achieved for public education since January of 2021. We can see the impact in our classrooms and in our communities every single day. This has been the most pro-public education, pro-labor White House in our history, in our history. NEA members know, they know this as well as anyone else. So I invited just a few of my closest friends that just happened to be NEA delegates to the 2023 Representative Assembly to share with you, their other closest friends, a little bit about what the work and the dedication and the commitment that this White House, the Biden-Harris White House, has done for them. So we're going to go over to microphone 13, where Delegate Ronnie Beard from the great state of Maryland <laughs> is going to share what this administration has meant to him. Ronnie? Good afternoon, my name is Ronnie Beard and this is my 15th year in education. I am from Maryland, currently serving on the board of directors for the Maryland State Education Association. My first 10 years, I was a special education ESP and then the past five years, I have been teaching high school social studies. Because of the Biden administration, I was able to be in the room with a small group of about 60 young men of color at the White House for a listening session with Vice President Kamala Harris to speak on the educator shortage and lack of educators of color. Being able to be and able to have a dialogue with the Vice President proved to me that the administration was listening and it was a priority for them. I was able to be a voice for us in that intimate setting Vice President Harris asked, what were some things that could be done to help solve the issue? Best believe I had a detailed list of information. <laughs> the Biden-Harris administration took time out to listen to my personal story. When has that ever happened before? In the coming years, I can see this administration tackling this issue for all of us in educators and future educators to come. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Yes, best believe you had a list, because you know what, Ronnie? I wouldn't have called on you if you didn't have that list. So thanks for showing up with that list, because you were there speaking for all of us. So Ronnie's not the only one that had that opportunity to uh, be with Vice President Kamala Harris. We also have Aaron Hedson as a delegate from the great state of Virginia. At microphone four, Erin. Hello, I am Erin Hedson, a special education teacher and building rep for John R. Lewis High School in Fairfax, Virginia. Gun violence is everywhere. And sadly, it has now become a predetermined fact of life that we must be prepared for. Gun violence affects the lives of our students and our educators far too often, both in and outside of the school. 
As our families, communities, and country reel from daily gun-related tragedies, please remember this administration and those beyond have vowed to change our culture and policies to stop this cycle of violence. Just one year after Uvalde, Vice President Harris came to my school where we rallied together against gun violence and spoke for change. Our students and fellow educators are counting on us. As an Air Force veteran, I never imagined my job as a teacher in the 21st century would become more high risk than the time in the service. Because, you know, we should be able to live in our homes, send our children to school, pray in our houses of worship, shop in our local malls, walk in our neighborhoods, and teach in our schools without being shot. Thank you. All right, guys. Oh, thank you so much, Aaron. Um, as I, too, talked with both the Vice President and the President about the work that NEA is doing to end gun violence in this country. Not only did they listen to uh, your story, but they've been listening to stories of educators all over this country, and when necessary, taking action when Congress did not. But pushing forward a bipartisan bill, the first that we've had in 30 years, it's not enough. And they understand that, and they're going to work with us to do more so that we finally end gun violence in this country. We have someone else with us who is a delegate who also has um, a, a, a story to share with you. I believe he is at microphone 15, Robert Gould from Colorado. Robert? Yes, yes. There you are. Thank you, Madam President. And a quick shout out to our Colorado delegation over there. <laughs> Hello, delegates. My name is Robert Gould. I'm in my 25th year as a special education teacher for Denver Public Schools in the colorful state of Colorado. I'm currently serving as the president of the Denver Classroom Teachers Association celebrating our 100th year as a labor union in Denver. The past three years have been a constant challenge for our students and our educators. The global pandemic exasperated gaps in mental health support for our students and educators alike. Educators like the ones standing with me today the Biden-Harris administration is working to address the, this. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra joined us at a Denver school for a roundtable conversation about our experience working with kids every day. And then they acted to fill those gaps. Mm. Make no mistake, the actions of this administration have saved lives and helped more of our students thrive, learn, and grow. Oh, thank you, Robert. We know how important the mental health of our students and educators and families and communities are in this moment. Always have been, of course, but certainly in this moment. So thank you for lifting up that important issue. And we know that not only Secretary Becerra is working with, that on, working with us on that, but Secretary Cardona as well. And we are so proud that you were able to lift your voice and speak on behalf of all of us and our students so they understood those real stories. Thank you so much. And we have now from the great state of South Carolina, yeah and the SCEA, -E Chastity Bacchus. I believe you are at the at microphone 33, Chastity? Yes, ma'am. Greetings, my name is Chastity Bacchus. This is my 22nd year in education as an elementary teacher. I am from South Carolina, serving as the local president of the York County Education Association 
and on the executive board of the South Carolina Education Association. Thanks to the Biden-Harris administration, I had $129,000 of my student loans forgiven. Ooh, wow. Oh my goodness. This was a tremendous financial burden lifted from my family. As we all know, our profession is one that is severely underpaid and to advance, we must continue our education, which is usually meaning incurring more debt. It's nearly impossible to get ahead when the pay increase is tremendously less than what we must pay back in student loans. The Biden-Harris administration listened to educators, took decisive action, and created a way for me to enhance my professional learning and to give back to the students and staff in the public education system. Because of this administration, many other educators can pursue advanced degrees to help better serve our students and communities. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Yeah. Uh, Wow, thank you, Chastity. You know, delegates, I get to hear from, uh, the, from members like the delegates you heard from just now every day. You know, Chastity, I, I, I've gotten hundreds of letters and emails from members like you who have gotten uh, in excess of $100,000 of their student loan debt uh, forgiven. And I always let them know it's because of the actions of our president that that happened, that that became a reality. And notwithstanding the actions of that not normal Supreme Court this last week, our president, as you know, spoke up right away and said, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. And he's going to continue to work to ensure that we have student loan uh, forgiveness. So thank you to all of our delegates who have lifted their voices on behalf of all of us. So as you know uh, and have seen today, we have never had stronger partners in the White House than President Biden and our NEA member, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden. As you've heard today, and Secretary Cardona just did yesterday, they listen to us. They want to hear from us, and they listen to us. And they've worked since day one to not only support public education in this country, but to support the people who have dedicated their lives to educating America's students. From the White House to the school board, Educators need partners like these to support our professions and strengthen opportunities for our students. Now, it is time for you to join me in giving a warm RA welcome to the President and First Lady of the United States of America. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Can you hear us, Jill? I can We're hear you. We're <laughs> standing. We're cheering. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, NEA. Hi, Becky. How are you? And how the, how's this year's RA going? Well, you know, there's nothing better I want to do than spend the 4th of July with almost 7,000 of my closest friends. It doesn't get better than that, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, you know, Becky, um, I was listening to all the um, questions and comments that the educators were making, and I have to say, I think I beat them all. I've just signed my new contract, and I think this is year 39 for me as a teacher. <laughs> So that's fabulous. Um, so <laughs> speaking of that, Dr. Biden, um, how do you as an educator use your summer, now you don't really get, nobody gets a summer off, right? But uh, you know, as you end one term and you start the, the next, 
How do you recharge yourself and prepare for that school year ahead? Well, I think like a lot of the members there, you know, I do some work, you know, during the summer. And uh, of course, I have that other job that you know about. Uh, you know, but I always try to take a week or yeah, two to relax. that other job too, Jill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I catch up on the books that I've been wanting to read. You know, I'm, I'm an English teacher, so, um, you know, I'm reading everything I can get my hands on. So if you have any good suggestions, will you just text them to me? <laughs> we absolutely will. OK. Because I'm always looking for some good books. And you know, I go to the beach. I'll be going tomorrow. And I like to um, you know, go for some bike rides and some walks. But you know, even though I try not to think about the fall, I'm always thinking about how I can change my curriculum. And, uh, and already, I have, I've been reading the papers, looking for articles that I, I want my students to write about. So I think um, I'm very much, you know, we're all the same. You know, I think that uh, now, you know, it's about, we're almost, I, I hate it when people say July 4th, well, the summer is half over. You know, I hate to hear that because it's just like it's gone so quickly. But I know that we don't have much time left. So, you know, there's sort of a mix of sadness, right, that this summer is going by so quickly. But I always look forward to the year ahead, and I'm always, you know, I'm already checking my roles to see if my classes are full. So, um, but it's good to join a group of people that know exactly how I feel, all of my fellow NEA members. And you know, I knew that Joe would always be the education president because he knows that our nation's, you know, the success of our nation starts with you, the educators who shape our students' lives. And so, you know, we've invested so much in our schools and our counselors and our nurses and administrators who make them all successful. And as he transforms, you know, our economy, creating millions of jobs that are shaping the future, he knows that education is key to filling those critical roles. And I want you to know that he hears you. You know, when I was listening, I, the things that I heard about, the gun control, the, um, you know, keeping our students safe, mental health in our schools, pay, the Biden-Harris administration is listening and we hear you. And we know that, you know, for most people, a high school diploma alone isn't enough to find a great career. But that doesn't mean that the only pathway to success is a four-year college degree. And as First Lady, you know, I've traveled this country and I've met so many amazing educators who are helping students explore and find their passions. Starting in middle and high school, they're creating opportunities to learn about computers and electric vehicles and wind turbines. You know, this is the future. They're helping young people find registered apprenticeships and dual enroll enrollment programs, which means they start in high school and even younger, middle school, and they start thinking about their careers and how they're going to get into those careers. That's the Biden education pathway. And it starts with free, high quality, universal, totally, preschool, and creates a kindergarten through 12th grade experience that prepares our students for their next steps. And it, su it supports apprenticeships and provides two years of affordable community college with avenues for students who decide you know, maybe I want to go to a four-year college, or maybe I don't. But this is the future of our workforce, a future that all of you make possible. And together, through the Biden education pathway, we can fundamentally transform what it means to make a living and make a life here in America. And now I'd like to introduce the man who will never stop fighting for you, who knows how important teachers and unions are to our students and to our country. My husband, the education president, Joe Biden. Happy
Happy Fourth of July. I'm Joe Biden. I am Joe Biden's husband. <laughs> Folks, let me start by saying educators have champions in the White House. Jill reminds me, and I mean this sincerely, all the time, teaching is not just what you all do. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I know the last few years have been incredibly difficult. We ask so much of you. And I want you to know I see you, we see you, we thank you, and we thank you, Becky, for your leadership. You know, I've often say, and you're tired of hearing me saying it probably, but children are the kite strings, they're not somebody else's shoes, they're all our children, are the kite strings that lift our national ambitions aloft. And you hold those strings. You hold those strings. And our job is to make sure you have what you need to do what you do best. That's why, through the American Rescue Plan, we delivered critical support for schools, including funding for after-school programs, summer programs, hiring more teachers, counselors, school psychologists. Folks, in fact, more than 80 percent of school superintendents say they're using those funds in the American Rescue Plan to help students recover academically and to address mental health crisis facing so many of our young people as a consequence of the pandemic. We're going to be talking about the pandemic, our, 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 those who succeed us, for a long time. It had profound impact, and it had negative impacts. And we're, we're working like hell to make it over, to overcome it. Compared with before the pandemic, the number of school nurses is now up 22 percent. The number of school social workers is up 43 percent. But we're just getting started. You know, we expect teachers to solve every problem, every problem. We need to provide access to preschool for three- and four-year-olds so they get the classroom ready to learn. And by the way, recent studies have indicated that if you start school, not, not, not day, daycare, school at three years old, no matter what your background is, no matter what home you come from, you have an incredible opportunity. You all know the, all, the, all the data and statistics that a kid going from a broken home in a tough circumstance is going to hear a million fewer words spoken by the time they get to first grade. Or they're going to find themselves in a situation where they are — their vocabulary is considerably less. Since I took office, we've added 100,000 public school teachers. We're going to continue working to address the teacher shortage. It's critical. It's critical. No, really, this is a national security issue. It starts with paying teachers and educators what they're worth. We're making it easier for teachers to — you got it, kid. That's why I know how to say not labor, but unions. Unions. We're making it easier for teachers to enter the field in the first place, which is why we're already helped nearly 20 states put in place registered apprenticeship programs. These programs give aspiring teachers a chance to train under experienced teachers like all of you while earning a paycheck and not having to take on more student debt. Another thing we can do is to help with the education shortage is to reduce the burden teachers face paying back their loans. When I came to office, there was a program called the Public Loan Service Forgiveness Program. It was a total mess. And it was designed, if you engage in public service, you can get your debt forgiven for education. We forgave more student loans than teachers. We had to — they had to be engaged in public service, not just teachers, but social workers and others, police officers, et cetera. But the program was too complicated, too difficult to take advantage of. But Jill and I were determined to fix it, and we have. Since I've been in office, there are now more than 615,000 teachers nurses, police officers, and others who have been able to get as much as loans in that $42 billion forgiven so far. $42 billion. And by the way, the program is still there. Go to — anyway, you ought to contact us to make sure you know exactly how to qualify, because you deserve that forgiveness. Finally, as you know, all too well, educators now find themselves in the front lines of gun violence. All of your — some of your members talked about it. Jill talked about it. With your help, we passed the most significant bipartisan gun safety legislation in 30 years, but it's not nearly enough. I was one of those guys early on when I was a senator who helped pass the assault weapons ban. 
We had to only we can only get it for 10 years, and one one of the Republican administrations got rid of it. But Congress needs to step up, pass common sense gun safety laws to protect our kids and educate them. And by the way, arming teachers is not the answer. Arming teachers is not the answer. Banning assault weapons and high capacity magazines, extensive background checks, they're part of the answer. They'll make a big difference. And one more thing. Let's stand with teachers and educators against politicians who are trying to score political points by banning books. Did you all ever think you'd be in a situation in the United States of America? We're talking about banning books and the people deciding who to what books to ban? Come on. That's not who we are. Let me close with this. So many of us are here, at least in part, because somewhere along the way, an educator believed in us, helped us believe in ourselves. I know that was the case for me in grade school, high school, and in college. I used to stutter very badly. I had teachers in grade school and then in high school who convinced me it couldn't define me. I wouldn't let it define me. And they helped me. I had a professor at the University of Delaware who became one of my great — he's the reason I ran. I didn't think I could. I didn't think I should. And he talked — he said, remember what Plato said, Joe? I'm trying to think, what the hell did Plato say? But what he said was <laughs> — to paraphrase him, he said, the penalty good people pay for not being involved in politics is being governed by people worse themselves. Run, Joe. Run. That's the power of a great educator. No, I really mean it. Think about it. All of you have somebody, somebody in your education who was just there for you, gave you confidence. We owe our nation as educators so much. And I'm here to say we have your back. We're committed to supporting all of you, just like you support the nation's future and our children. Folks, this Independence Day, we should be more optimistic than ever. We have to remember who we are. We're the United States of America. We have never, never failed to accomplish a goal we set out to accomplish when we've done it together. There's nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we do it together. We've come out of every crisis, unlike any other nation in the world today. We've come out of every crisis we've faced at least in the past 247 years stronger than we entered that crisis. We're doing it again. I've never been more optimistic than I am today. I really mean it. Never been more optimistic. There's so much we can do. We're on the edge, and the American people are figuring out what the other team's talking about, and they don't like it. So, folks, happy Fourth of July. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you do. May God bless you all, and may God bless our nation's educators. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.